Hello and welcome to the Red Ben TV. It is the Uncensored Match Build-Up Show. I'm Chris Pajak. That is James Redmond. Jim Bob Redmond, Dean, yo. He's in the building. <laughs> My guy. Fucking love Give me some skin. Yo. I nearly left you hanging there, didn't I? Wow. That would have been embarrassing. That would have been devastating. I'm so glad that that didn't happen to me like it happened to Sai last week on one of the shows. Where Did he it went. happen to Sai? Yeah, Sai, Sai thought that um, Ben was going for a high five and went for a high five on camera and Ben wasn't going for a high ben five. Ben doesn't go for high fives. Nobody firstly. goes for high fives. Right? And secondly, that would happen to Sai. Yeah, it would. And it did. And it was brilliant. And we rinsed him for it. We put it in the video a few times. And rightly so. With slow-mo. Anyway, we are here to talk about Liverpool versus Dortmund. It's the first of three US pre-season friendlies. The squad is out. Ooh. By position, we've got Mignolet, Atherton on the level. Lauren Green, Van Dijk, uh -huh. Gomez, Matip, Lovren, Vandenberg, Phillips, Alexander Allen, Robertson, Hoover, Klein, Lewis, LaRucci, Fabinho, Henderson, Wijnaldum, Ox, Milner, Lalana, Jones, Will Benarigi, Brewster, Wilson, Kent and Duncan. There you go. Well in, lad. That was good, that. It was all right, that wasn't was it? Really? That, I've been watching a lot of battle rap. Anyway, um, so one of the things that I wanted to talk about obviously is is who should get their opportunities. We've yeah. seen Liverpool against Sammy, we've seen Liverpool against Bradford. Um, there are a load of plays that I want to see, James, but who is it that you want to see from those lads that we've just mentioned? There's one in particular. He played the first half against Tramia and I've kind of bigged him up since I've seen him in that game and it's Larucci. I was just so impressed with him in that first half against Tramia. I thought the way he went forward was very good and, and I didn't quite expect him to run at defenders in the way that he did and obviously you know he, he's a young player there's still going to be um, room for improvement in certain areas probably defensive areas in particular but that's why you, you start players like him in these type of games against Dortmund etc because they're going to be playing you know they're going to be rotating their team and I think it's a perfect game for someone like Larucci to come in and show what he can do against Absolutely. the top I mean, Larucci was a converted winger, you know, yeah. so that's why you can see that drive and determination to go yeah. forward and, and go past players. I was particularly impressed, like you, with how he was willing to go beyond. He looked raw, yeah. he looked powerful, he looked athletic, yeah. but he, it, very, very raw for me. And I, li I like that, 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 you know, you can you can soften the edges, as it were, yeah. um, but it'll be good for him to go up, hopefully Dortmund play some big players, it'll be good to see him against the likes of those. And, you know, there's a space in the squad, isn't there? You know, LaRucci and Adam Lewis are probably fighting for an opportunity to fight for the backup left-back yeah. position. Um, and it'd be nice to see one of them showcase their Definitely. talent enough that Klopp thinks of them as, the, as a genuine option there. Yeah, 100%. And I think with both players, I think that's only better for us as fans, kind of, because obviously we're talking about buying a backup left back etc but when you have two young left backs who quite clearly want to be that guy who's just you know behind Robertson it brings out better performances out of both players because when a player is comfortable in their position that's when they might start to drop off a little bit and the energy levels might you know begin to you know lower and I think when you've got that competition, it only brings out the best in That's you. That's it. And these lads, these young lads, are going to be playing Dortmund, yeah. Sevilla, Sporting. Mm -hmm. I mean, these are big sides, big European sides. And, you know, I mean, a name on everybody's lips at the moment is, is Rian Brewster, isn't it? And, mm -hmm. you know, we've seen him score goals against uh, Tranmere and Bradford. Definitely. We want to see him take that step up as well. He's the one that I'm most excited for, I think, yeah. Rian Brewster. Are, are you excited to see him again? I've kind of made a big call. I, I've kind of said that he's going to be the next big thing in the Premier League. Um, and this season? Not this season, just in the upcoming seasons, you know, as he gets a bit older, gets a bit more game time. And the reason why is because I just see that natural ability in terms of, of what a striker needs, the composure, his first touch, his finishing ability. I feel he's got all these things that a lot of players don't have and he can work on other things, you know, like getting in behind, getting in the right position. But in terms of his composure on the ball and his, his 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 ability to find positions to be able to you know get in get in that right area in the box and slot a goal in. I feel I feel that's, that's what same. it looks like he's got in abundance, doesn't it? You exactly. know that that ability as you say to just find that little bit of space and his finishing looks great and you know even his hold up play I was massively impressed with it against Tranmere. Balls getting lumped for, up for to a, him for, and for, for holding him off. Smaller, yeah, he's he's very strong. He seems to be very you know he, he likes. But to it's that touch people. as well that that ability to knock a ball around the corner and go oh, yeah. and look to run in behind. He's such an exciting talent and with Liverpool not looking likely to sign a forward player it does say to us all I think that Rian Brewster is there and he's a genuine part of this first team squad yeah. and he will I think there's an opportunity for him if he performs well in these three games I'm looking at that going you're picking up Daniel Sturridge's games yeah. this season and 
You might even pick up a few off Divock Origi if you can out the best in the world. Defo. I, I couldn't agree more. You know what I mean? And, and the thing about Brewster, he, he's showing signs at a very young age that I don't think other players like Divock Origi and Daniel Sturridge were showing. Obviously, I don't know what he was playing like when they were 18. But the thing is, Brewster's being talked about as a real big prospect. Yeah. And I understand that that can get into some players' heads. But he seems to... He's been a prospect for a while now. We've all been boasting about him for quite a bit. You know, he's... He's kept his head down, he's come into this pre-season and he's showing us why he can be in this team. And maybe Jürgen's looked at it and hasn't gone and bought a four because maybe he's actually happy with what he's got. Maybe he's actually happy with Divock being the backup and rightly so. And then you've got this young upcoming superstar in Rian Brewster. He might see it, he, we, we, we think we see it, but maybe Jürgen just knows this kid has all the abilities and attributes to become a top class player. Why spend 40 million, 50 million, 60 million on a fourth striker if exactly. you believe the man's good enough? Exactly. We're talking about Kylian Mbappe's, for example. Why go and spend 200 million on a kid? Now, listen, I'm not saying Bruce is better than Mbappe, I'm not saying that. But what I'm saying is, when you've got a, a talent there, a player who can go on to become a top class player, why go and spend 200 million when you could have it right That's in it. your face? You, you know, I mean, I'd still sign Mbappe, don't get me wrong. No, but no, Shane. Don't. Your, point, your point is, I suppose, that you don't want to stunt the development of Brewster. Exactly. And you need to find him game time at some exactly. point during the season so that he can improve. So yeah. that in two, three years' time, you reap the benefits of that. Exactly. Now, if he comes in and starts making a good start and then forces his way into, you know, the backup yeah. and then produces then all of a sudden you're in an even better position yeah. because the lad who you were happy with as your number two in Divock mm -hmm. is all of a sudden your number three because yeah. Brewster's performing. It's, all, exactly. it's almost win-win. He's yeah. just got to do it on the pitch and now the thing in games is, that matter. Yeah, and don't get me wrong, me, you, most Liverpool fans would want Mbappe, but if we're talking from Jürgen's point of view, you know what Jürgen's like, he, he wants to make his signings, he wants his players. Maybe he's not interested in going to spend X amount of million on Mbappe when he thinks, do you know what, I can turn this player into an Mbappe or do you know what, I can turn this player into a Rian Brewster but make him very, very good. Yeah, no, that makes perfect sense. Another one I'm interested in seeing, actually, Seth Vandenberg. You know, uh, new yeah. shining, um, ha didn't, didn't play against Bradford. Uh, as no. I remember. Um, Don't think so. So we're looking to see him. We're looking to see, you know, will he slot in alongside maybe a Matip or a Gomez, potentially Virgil van Dijk. If he plays, yeah. It, you know, and that would be interesting to see, a van Dijk and, you know, van der Berg partnership. And the reason why that would be interesting, it'd be nice to see what he's like against the next to the best centre-back in the world, see how he plays off that, see how he feeds off that. And... Um, I'm excited to see him. You know, he's got a real physical presence about him. You know, he's a big lad. He's young, which is always a good thing. And also, if Jurgen Klopp has brought him in because he's wanted to bring him in, and when Jurgen Klopp brings in a player, you, nine times out of ten, they usually do well. If yeah. your name's not Loris Carrier. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> like, another one I want to see more out of is is Keanu Hoover. You know, had a good game against Bradford. Definitely. Looked. Terrific, actually. Again, really athletic. Looks lo lo love Very that ball at his feet. For the under Absolutely, and, yeah. and rightly so. And you know he'll be wanting to bang on the on the first yeah. team though this season. So big opportunities for a lot of players in this squad. I mean, Curtis Jones is a lad who from this city first and foremost. Almost Liverpool's forgotten man at the moment because of the light yeah. that's being shone on Brewster and maybe the new signings. Yeah. But this is a big pre-season for Curtis Jones and I think you know we saw such exciting talent out of him last pre-season. He's got exactly. to kick on though, hasn't he? That's exactly what's got to happen with Curtis Jones. You know, he, we, He's shown us that he's got the quality there but now it's about putting in the performances consistently when he does get the chance. And if he is... Because obviously he can be a good player but if you're not better than the player above you, then... You know, you're not going to make it into the team, do you know what I mean? But talking about players like Curtis Jones, is did you mention Duncan? Is he on this list? He is on the list. Yeah, yeah Duncan. So, there's another player, you know, homegrown, Gerard's cousin, of course. Another exciting player. It's about who wants it more out of all these young lads, and that's a good thing to have. Not just, like, one or two prospects there. There's plenty. What do you think... How do you think Jürgen will set these sides up, James? Do you think it'll be a mix like it has been against Bradford of, of youth and experience, or... Do you think he'll maybe like go with a bit more youth in one half and a bit more experience in the other? I'm not really too sure because obviously all the games are closed in together as well, aren't they? There's, there's not really a big difference between the games. I think you know there's Dortmund on the Saturday and then there's Sevilla on the Sunday. Obviously that's over here, of course. Yeah, time difference. Time isn't difference, it? but they're all very close together, so it's kind of hard to say what he's going to come and set up with. But I am expecting to see a lot of the youth and players like you know Nathaniel Klein coming in and you know giving him a chance. Do you know what I mean? Obviously there's the star players like Van Dijk as well, who you want to see and kick on. 
Mm. Um, it will be very interesting to see, though. I think. What do you think about that? I think I think we'll go for a mix of youth and experience, and I wonder whether this time, you know, we might start to see 60, 70 minutes out of a side rather than yeah. the forty-five that we've been seeing. I'm expecting sixty, seventy. Yeah, and I, I can't remember the last couple of pre-seasons on the year, whether it was the third game that they started to do that. But certainly yeah. with the games being closer together, it seems like a bit more rest and recovery for a starting eleven. Yeah. Get them into that routine, mm -hmm. and that way, by the time they get into Monday then they can sort of get back on it and get ready yeah. for the third game. So I, I think he'll pick two almost separate sides for both games mm -hmm. and he'll use the rest of his squad to make up the substitute appearances yeah. and stuff. But youth and experience again for me. I think that would make most, most sense as well, youth and experience, when you're playing teams like Dortmund because they'll probably be doing the same thing. They'll probably be getting some of their youth players in and then they'll be putting some of the big names in as well. Yeah, and, and Favre's obviously uh, Borussia Dortmund's manager. They had a great start last season, didn't they? They were yeah. top of the Bundesliga. I think it was a Christmas time they were still top. Uh, Fell away a little bit, knocked out of the Champions League yeah. in the round of 16, as I remember. Um, Done well in the group stage, though. They were like really oh, yeah. shining in the group Absolutely. stage. Like, but, but, you know, and, and obviously they've got some big names there. They've obviously lost Pulisic to Chelsea and stuff like that. But it'd be, it'd be good to see Jaden Sancho. Sancho yeah. wouldn't it? <laughs> yeah, and it would, good, it would be good to see him up against one of our younger players Definitely. as well. You know, a, a fancy like a, you know, I forget which side he plays on now, but you know, you if it's Keanu like Hoover or yeah. if it's uh, Larucci, like Larucci, something like that, that'd be a big test for one of them. 100%. And it, you get a real, a real idea of where those lads are in the development if they were to go up against him. That's why these type of games can kind of kickstart your career in a way, even though they're only pre-season. But imagine if, let's say, Larucci does come up against Sancho and absolutely has him in the back pocket all game. Already, that one performance could make him the backup to Robertson. And it's true because you, you've just shown that you can keep a top class player in your back pocket for a, for a full ninety minutes. That's the type of that. These are the type of games that players like Lelucci and Lewis will be absolutely wanting to play in. Yeah, absolutely. And, and one that. final thing before we wrap it up, then you know Sadio Mane uh, got, got through to the Afcon final. Looks like he's My probably going to miss uh, the Norwich game. There's a there's a spot up for grabs there, isn't there? And yeah. I think. There's a, there's a few names in the hat for it. I think Divock Origi can play that left-hand side. Yeah. Certainly, we've seen that at times. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, could Brewster fight his way in for that spot, do you think? Is it a realistic target? Did I think he... it's a realistic target. I'm not being funny. He's, 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 he's absolutely shone in the first two pre-season games. And if he can do the same against Dortmund, Sevilla and... Sporting. Sporting. Then why not? You know, when you play, especially if you're a striker, your job's to score goals, and if you keep scoring goals, then you can't deny him that chance. Realistically, especially if Manny's not available. Obviously, there's players like Wilson and Kent there who, who could maybe potentially go for that spot. I don't, I don't think that will happen. I think that's a bit more unrealistic. Um, but realistically, I think players like Kent and Wilson should maybe get a chance in those type of games because they've just gone away on loan. They've been the player of the... I think Wilson was the player of the season for Derby, wasn't he? I know Kent was for Rangers. Young player, anyway, yeah. Young player, yeah. Um, but honestly, I, I think if they're going to go out on loan and play as well as they've been doing, they need to get given a little chance. Yeah, um, I just I just don't see that Kent... And I, I, I hate saying this, I just don't see that Kent's good enough. And, and, and it, it sounds enough. terrible. I think he's a good player. I really do. Yeah. I just think that he's competing with world-class players and he's not there. And, you know, the drop-off for me is, and I, I hate saying this, it's too big, you know what I mean? And yeah. I think the, the ceiling of a Rian Brewster is much higher, unfortunately, than a, than a ceiling of a, of a Kemp. We've ended up a real... Debbie Downer there, like I didn't really no. want to say anything bad about him, but I, I just don't, I just no, genuinely don't though. think he's gonna make a make a first but team. But the thing splash. is, though, it's fit, and that's fair enough. But it's people like you who players like him need to prove wrong, and that, and that's just how it works. You know, I'm sure there's been players before that you've looked at and gone, not good enough. For example, Divock Origi got relegated with Wolfsburg, come back, got us into the Champions League final, scored in the Champions League final, could have even won us that Champions League final because Spurs was putting the pressure on us, and. That's why I like seeing kinds of comebacks like that. Because Kent, he's always been, you know, when he's played, you've seen that he can get at defenders, he can get past them, he can create chances, but there's not that final, you know, there's not that. That's what sets great players and 
good players are part in it. And, and, that, and that's the right thing, and that's what he needs to work on if he does want to be a top yeah, player. Yeah, well, his opportunity's here. He's on the pre-season there tour, you go. finally, so hopefully he does. Uh, don't forget to check back at the channel later on in the week. Uh, we'll be having some videos in and around the US tour. We've got Sean Kelly over there, our man on the ground, for this game. Uh, and then me and Paul will be picking up the reins uh, in Boston and New York. And I genuinely can't wait. Uh, thank you very much for watching, James. Thank you very much for joining me. Uh, don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the Redman TV on YouTube and we'll see you next time. Ta-da.